when I walked into the door, I sensed his presence. Oh, and I knew this was the place where love abounds. For this is the temple and Jehovah God, he abides here. And we are standing in his presence on holy ground. And we are standing. of the Lord. Glad you're here. Amen. I know you could have been many other places, but I'm glad you made the choice to be in the house of the Lord. Thankful for 103 in Sunday school this morning. To God be the glory for that. Amen. I have a card to read. Amen. The card says this. Thank you for your thoughtfulness. 
wanting you to know the kindness, the, the kindness like yours will always be remembered. Your fam our family would like to thank you for all the beautiful flowers. Most of all, we appreciate the heartfelt prayers, the Ronnie Cooley family. So let's remember them and uh, in the days ahead, let's continue to remember them in prayer and uh, uphold them in prayer. Amen. Amen. Remember next Sunday, next Sunday morning, a.m., we will be starting revival right here with the Blythe family. We're looking forward to revival, looking forward to a great meeting. Be here in revival. I'm asking each and every one. I know I'm asking, not commanded, because I can't do that. I, I'm asking, be here in revival. It's two extra nights. That's it. That's, well, yeah, two extra nights, Monday and Tuesday night. We're here on Wednesday anyway, but be here in revival. You will be blessed. I promise you, you will be blessed. So make plans to be here in revival, if at all possible. And uh, I promise you, you and your family will receive something from the Lord in this meeting. Amen. We're looking forward to that. I believe that's all the announcements that we have uh, coming up. If there are some, I'll get them to you tonight. That's all that I know of. Is that right, Sister Jen? Is that all? That's all of them for now. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's invite him in our midst today. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you today. We thank you for this opportunity. Lord, what a privilege it is to be in your house today. God, we ask you, Lord, that you would work, that you would move in a mighty way. Lord, we feel your presence. We know, God, that you're already here. And, Lord, we're asking you, God, to work. Lord, show, oh, God, show yourself in a mighty way. Lord, we're believing, God, for you to work. Touch hearts, touch lives today. Lord, would you heal. Lord, would you strengthen. Lord, would you encourage, save, deliver, set free today in your house. God, we love you. We thank you for it. Lord, in your wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen. All that's willing and able, come on, come help us out in the choir this morning.
describe heaven it's going to be a hundred times of that amen it'll be a million times of that amen oh hallelujah oh we can't understand our mortal minds can't wrap around oh the splendor and beauty of heaven amen but i tell you this i'm ready amen i'm ready i'm ready to one day make heaven my home amen i believe i believe church we're close amen i believe we're very close Amen. Are you ready today? Amen. Are you ready? If you're not, what a better day than today to get ready. Amen. Oh, and you can enjoy the splendors of heaven on this side of glory. You can be happy just like we are. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Amen. I believe, amen, there's many needs among us that we have. Let's continue to remember Sister Tammy uh, in the next coming days. The Lord would be with her. She was unable to receive her first treatment on Friday. And uh, the Lord knows. He's, he, he's well aware of what's going on there. Uh, so there's a reason. There's a reason why it didn't work out. And uh, we're trusting the Lord, continuing to believe that God would be with her and touch her. Amen. Let's remember Sister Wright today that God would uh, touch her, be with her, visit her. Amen. Where she is. Amen. Brother Calvin, Sister Lib as well. Let's remember uh, uh, them today. Let's remember Pumpkin today. He's uh, in the hospital and uh, has uh, an infection uh, in his big toe. And uh, not to go too deep into details, but he needs a touch from the Lord. Uh, there, there is a potential. If this infection does not get under control, uh, if they're not able to, to stop it, 
uh, there's potential he could lose that toe. And uh, we are, we're just believing God to touch his body and to heal him. Amen. And went to the emergency room for uh, another issue. And uh, they're working on that as well. But this has come about. And let's be praying for him. That God would touch him and move for him and his body. Him being diabetic, uh, this, this doesn't help anything. Uh, so let's remember uh, him today that God would touch them. Uh, let's remember uh, Sister Carol's uh, cousin, uh, James Miller. Is that, is that correct? Is that correct? James Miller. Let's remember him today. He needs a touch in his body. Uh, God to touch him and heal him. Amen. And pray the Lord would touch his heart. Amen. Touch his soul. Amen. Remember him today that God would touch him and move for him. Amen. I know that there are many needs. Let's remember Jeremy Sipe from Virginia as well. God would continue to touch his body and move for him. Let's remember River. He broke his wrist. Glad he's with us this morning. Uh, but let's remember him today that God would touch his body and uh, heal him. Allow that wrist to heal just quickly and uh, no issues there. Amen. How many have an unspoken need this morning by uplifted hand? God knows this need. How many has lost family you want to see saved? Amen. Sure we do. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you today. God, we thank you for your spirit that we feel in your house today. God, we come to you today humbly. Lord, asking you today, God, that you would work. Lord, that you would touch, that you would move on behalf of each and every one of these needs. Lord God, would you work and let your will be done. God, we know that you're able to heal. We know, God, that you're able to touch. We know, God, that you're able, Lord, to minister, Lord, and to work and heal bodies. Lord, we're trusting you today. We're believing you, God, to do just that. Oh, God, we ask you, Lord, to touch these that are fighting cancer. Lord, would you heal them? Go to where they are. Touch their bodies. Lord, we command this cancer to dry up and die. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, these that are unable to be with us, would you go to them? Would you touch them? Minister to them. Let them know today, God, that you're near unto them. All manner of sickness and diseases, Lord, you're able to touch and work and move and do what only you can do. Lord, we're asking you, God, to save our family. Reach them. Let conviction grip their heart. Lord, would you soften the heart of the lost man or woman. Lord, show them today their need of salvation. Show them how close eternity is. Lord, and draw them to your side. Lord, move for every unspoken need. You know what it is. You know where they are. God, work and do what only you can do. Lord, we love you. We thank you for it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated this morning. Hallelujah. Ushers, if you will, come on. Let's receive the tithe and offering today. Thank you for being obedient in your giving unto the Lord. Amen. I know the Lord will richly bless you. Amen. For being obedient to him. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray today. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you today. God, we ask you, Lord, that you would take what is given. Multiply it, Lord, to meet the need. Thank you for this opportunity to give out of our abundance, Lord, and give to you. Lord, you've been faithful to us, and now we return it unto you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's worship with them this morning as they sing.
Amen. Lord, I thank you today for those blood stains. Amen. Thank you for dying on that cross for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter number four this morning. I want to say again, it is so good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. Visitors, home folks alike, so good to see you here. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're looking for a home church and you're visiting today, quit looking. Amen. This is it right here. You have found a home. Amen. Amen. Can the home folks say amen? amen. Surely not just me is going to say that. Today. Amen. Amen. No, it is so good to have you here. And thank you for being in the house of the Lord. I know you didn't come to see me or hear what I had to say. If you did, you've already been disappointed. I pray you came to hear from the Lord and let the Lord talk to your heart and soul. Amen. Matthew chapter number 4. Let's read verse number 18. Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. Amen. May the Lord anoint his word today. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. In order for you to follow someone, uh, you must trust that individual. Amen. You're, nobody, I don't believe, in their right mind, that is, is going to just blindly follow somebody that they do not trust. Uh, and most of us, we must have a, a deep regard, a deep trust for uh, that individual that we are following, knowing that they are leading us, knowing that they are taking us uh, down the road or, or where we need to go. Nobody's going to follow somebody uh, directional-wise if, if they don't know where they're going either. So, well, I really don't know how to get there. Follow me. I'm not going to follow that person. I'm going to find somebody that knows where they're going and how to get there. Uh, the, the idea of let's just figure it out on the way and as we go, uh, it, that, that, that doesn't work. <laughs> that's, that's not a good way uh, of following somebody. Uh, the Bible speaks of following someone uh, that, that does not know what they're doing. The Bible speaks of someone, uh, speaks of following someone, that uh, it can be dangerous to follow somebody that does not know where they're going or does not have a clear direction. Prove it, all right? Matthew chapter number 15, verse 14, Christ gave the command and he said, uh, pretty much leave them alone. Don't follow them. They're blind. He said, when the blind leads the blind, they're both going to end up in the ditch. Amen. When the blind is leading the blind and, they're, and neither one of you know where you're going, you're both going to end up in the ditch. Amen. I, I, this morning, I don't want to follow somebody that's blind. I don't want to follow somebody that cannot see where they're going. I don't want to follow somebody that does not have direction or have clear vision of the path that we need to go. I got lost in the woods one time uh, when I was, I don't know, eight, nine years old. My dad was building a house and, and uh, just through the woods, uh, a short distance was my grandmother's house and it was just a straight shot through the woods. And and uh, I, I don't know the distance from the house to, 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 to Granny's house, but it wasn't far. I, I do know that. And uh, I asked my dad if I could go to Granny's. I was disinterested in the building project that we were doing there. I said, can I go to Granny's house? Sure, go ahead. And so I struck out going to Granny's house. I got in the woods and I realized that uh, I, I didn't know where I was. I, uh, being a little boy, being in those woods, every, I got turned around and I found myself a long ways away from where I was. Well, I didn't know what anything to do, so I stopped where I was and I began to scream for my dad. I, just, I don't know if he could hear me or not, but I knew that he knew where I was supposed to be. I knew that he knew the route through the woods. He knew uh, the place that I needed to go and how to get me 
out of that jam. So I called his name. I screamed dad as loud as I could. And, and eventually he showed up. Uh, I don't know if he heard me. Or I, I know he did uh, when he got close. But I, I think he realized that he had not heard from, from Granny yet that I had made it to, uh, safely to uh, the, her house. So he started looking for me. Well, when he found me, Brother Bruce, there, there was no, uh, uh, well, let me see what we need to do. I don't really know how to get out of here. He found me. What are you doing? I said, I'm lost. I don't know where I'm at. Come on, follow me. And uh, we went on. And it was, I mean, just uh, it felt like a few seconds. Boom, we was at Granny's house. Man, why didn't he just take me over there to begin with? But he knew the way that we needed to go. He knew the, the path that we needed to take in order to get us where we needed to be safely. Christ gave the command several times in Scripture this morning. Several times he gave the command to follow him. Amen. And I want us to understand that today is that it was a command to follow him. And as we look at scripture and as we look at all the different cases, what we find is that not everybody's response was the same to Christ's command to follow him. And not everything that Christ asked individuals to do uh, was alike. It was different pertaining to the individual. But the command to follow him was the same. Amen. There may have been things that he asked this one to do and he didn't ask that one to do but he followed it up with follow me. If you want to get there safely then you must follow me. I want to say today if I could right here that I'm glad that several years ago, amen, not really sure, it was one of those youth camp services I think or, or youth rallies, one of them eventually stood I don't know the exact date, but uh, one of them, amen, I decided to follow the Lord, amen. I decided that, I believe, if I remember correctly, it was around 13, 14 years of age that I decided with my whole heart that I want to follow God, amen. I want to follow the Lord, and I can stand here today, and I can say beyond a shadow of a doubt that I do not regret one moment that I have ever had with the Lord. Amen. I can stand here today and I can say that I don't regret making the choice to follow him. Hallelujah. Why are you so sure in that statement, Brother Ryan? It is because he knows where we're going. Amen. He knows the journey that we are on and he knows the path that I must take. Amen. Therefore, I'm going to continue to follow him. I'm going to continue to trust in him. I'm going to continue to serve him with my whole heart and do all that I can to live pleasing unto him. I'm going to continue to follow the Lord because he has never failed me. Amen. I will say this morning, if you're searching for direction, if you're searching for uh, life's uh, uh, answers, for life's problems, I, I, I challenge you today to follow the Lord. Amen. If you're searching for answers, if you're looking for direction, if your life feels like it is spinning out of control and you don't know which way to go and there is no settledness at all in your life, I challenge you today to take up your cross and and follow him. Amen. To take up your cross and follow him. Amen. Oh, there won't be a decision that you'll make in life that you will uh, that, that you will enjoy more, that you will appreciate more than the decision to follow the Lord. Oh, it is not a life of ease. Oh, no. There are hills. There are valleys. There are hard times. There are heartache and disappointment. But it is a life of joy. Amen. It is a life of peace. It is a life of happiness. It is a life of contentment, knowing that I'm following the master, knowing that I'm following the one that is in charge, knowing that I'm following him, and he has clear direction for my path. Amen. You'll never regret following him. Amen. You'll never regret serving the Lord. Amen. I will say today that following him comes more within just 
falling in behind and following him. Amen. The command that Christ gives to follow me, he, it was given to those that wanted to do what Christ did. It was given to those that, was, that wanted to be the hands and the feet of Christ. Amen. It was given to those that, that wanted to work for him and wanted to spread his gospel. All right? Then come and follow me and I will show you how to do it. Amen. I can explain it to you, but it's going to be better if you have on the job training. It's going to be better if you do, if you follow me and you watch me and I will show you what to do. I don't want to be a follower of Christ that is just falling in line behind him and I'm just uh, walking along but no I want to be a follower of Christ where I am doing what Christ did I want to be a follower of Christ that is preaching his gospel I want to be a follower of Christ that is reaching the lost and the hurting and the broken I want to be the hands and the feet of Christ and, and we must understand today that that is our commission as well is to be a follower of Christ and to do what he did. Amen. We find in Matthew chapter 19, we find the story of the rich young ruler. Paraphrasing this morning, not reading the story, but the, the rich young ruler comes to Christ and, and expresses his desire oh, to be with the Lord. And, and, the, and he tells the rich young ruler, well, all right, if this is what you want to do, if, if what you're saying is correct and you want to follow me, then there's some things I need you to do. Hey Amen. There's some things that are, are going to be specific just to you. And I need you to do these things. I need you to go. I need you to sell what you have. I need you to disperse it among the poor. I, I need you to do all of this and then come and follow me. I don't know how the whole conversation went, but uh, there may have been some back and forth. There may have been some, why do I have to do that? Why do I have to make that decision? Why, why do I have to oh, go? to do all that why can't I keep all of this and, and why can't I, I still follow you I, I don't know the exact answer but I believe Christ saw something in this young man that that will hold you back that will hinder you from doing what you say you want to do you got to understand that this wasn't Christ's idea this was the rich young ruler's idea I want to follow you all right then this is what you have to do well we know how the story goes and how it Everything plays out. The rich young ruler leaves sorrowfully. I don't want to do that. I, I don't want to sell all that I have. It is not worth it to sell all that I have and follow you. Well, we must understand today. We must understand today that he is not going to make you follow him. Amen. He is not going to make you get in line behind and follow him, but rather he is looking for volunteers that are willing to say, I will follow no matter the cost. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This was not the idea of Christ, but he came to Christ and I want to follow you. Well, I don't want to do all that. I'm going to leave. I'm going to go my separate way. Well, we find again in Luke chapter number nine, Christ is given some more teaching, some more instruction to those that want to be followers of him. He's explaining that, you know, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man have no place to lay his head. These clothes that I wear, we knew they were, they were borrowed garments. He had no home. He didn't have a place like you and I have today. And he's telling them, take up your cross and follow me. Take up the burden to follow me. It is not going to be an easy journey. Take up the cross. Take up the burden and follow me. He's telling these group of individuals here that if you want to follow me, then get under the load. Get under the burden and follow me. It is now time for you to not just be to walk in my footsteps and be a spectator, but the follower that I am looking for is the one that will bear the burden. The follower that I am looking for, the follower that I am commissioning you to be is is one that will take up the cross. Amen. Will take a little bit of reproach 
and will take a little bit of shame when it comes to following him. Oh, as I've said already, this may not be the easiest way. It may not be the smoothest ride in town, but I'll tell you this, it has been a wonderful way. There has been the burden of the cross. There has been the reproach of the cross. There has been shame, but I've never found a place that I wanted to lay the cross down. I'm glad that I made the decision to take up the cross and follow him. Some today are resistant and refuse. Some today say, you know what? I'm not willing to sign up for that deal. I'm not willing to sign up for that bargain. I'm not willing to sign up for that. I'm not interested in any of that. They refuse and they want the easy way. One thing we must understand, I'll reiterate this, is we must understand that these are commands. These are commands. If you're going to follow me, this is what you must do. Follow me was a command, not a suggestion. Amen. I also know that there are some, and I believe this may be the large part of where we are today. This may be a large part of where we find most people today. And getting back to our text this morning, I feel that there are a large amount of people when it comes to following Christ that they feel that I am not worthy to follow Christ. I am not worthy to follow him. I am not worthy to be a minister for him. I am not worthy to teach for him. I am not worthy to sing for him. I'm not the one. Amen. I am not worthy. I don't believe that it is met with a resistant heart. I don't believe that it is met with a, a, just a, a animosity and a pushback. But I believe that there is a genuine feeling among so many today that feel like I can't do that brother Ryan I am not worthy I appreciate what you do and what others do but I am not worthy I want you to know today that that is a lie from the pit of hell amen if God is calling you then you are worthy amen if God is giving you the command to follow me then you are worthy and if you're sitting in here today then you are here Hearing the command, follow me. Oh, but I've done bad in my life. It does not matter. Follow me. Oh, but I'm not knowledgeable. It does not matter. Follow me. I don't know how to do all that. It does not matter. Follow me. There's no way I could teach a class or preach a sermon. Follow me. There's no way that I could stand and sing and minister to the glory of God. Follow me. Christ is saying to you today. We find today the Christ, and I've mentioned this before in another sermon, but we find today the Christ is on the Sea of Galilee. He's walking on the Sea of Galilee. Christ realizes, Brother Donald Wayne, that if, if I, I, when I leave, I'm going to need somebody here to carry this on. When I leave, I've got to impact some individuals greatly that will be disciples when I leave. So Christ is looking for disciples. Amen. We're not talking about some flim flam individual. We're talking about Christ. He's looking for disciples. Christ himself is looking for teachers and educators and those that will be used by him. He is looking for somebody that will spread the gospel once he is gone. I will say today that if that was me, Brother David, looking for individuals to uh, spread the gospel, I'd go to the church. I'd go to the church. I, the first time, I'd call Sister Patsy. Sister Patsy, will you be willing to be a disciple? You, you've, you've taught Sunday school for so many years. Oh, will, will you be a disciple? Brother Terry, you served on the deacon board for many years. Will you be a disciple? And I, I'm not picking people. No, no, no. I, I'd, I'd come to any. I'd go to the church house. I'd come in here on Sunday morning. I'd say, oh, there's some saints in there. Can, 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 will anybody in here willing to be a disciple? But that's not what Christ did. That's not how he went about his business. Following the, picking those 
was that he wanted to follow him. We find that he's down on the seashore. We find that he's down there this day and he's looking at these men that are tying their nets. They're, they're working. They're mending holes in their nets. They're casting them out into the sea. Hey Amen. There's another group a little further down the beach that is collecting their catch and is putting their nets back together and weaving them back together. Amen. Now let's remove ourselves and take ourselves to that beach of that day. Let's take in all the smells and the sounds of what's going on there that day. We know that these are fishermen. These are men that are uh, maybe not the cleanest of individuals in town. They've been out fishing all night long. They may have been on a journey. They may have been on a, on a three or four day journey or two, however long it may have been. And they're casting these nets. These men are not freshly showered and do not have on their clean clothes. Amen. Oh, can you picture what's going on? These men stink. Amen. Body odor reeks from these men because they have been out all day, all night, and they have been fishing. You see, there's some in the catch that, that did not live, so those dead fish have been thrown up on the bank, and there's seagulls swarming of the carcasses of the dead fish. They're doing all they can to preserve the ones that are still alive. They're, 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 there's an odor on the beach that it's not some I wouldn't be down here picking disciples oh these are men uh, probably have dirt under their fingernails uh, and their toenails are, are nasty their clothes are dirty amen their skin is like leather these are the rough individuals of society oh but Christ now finds himself on this beach amen to where you and I amen I'm not even going to talk about the Pharisees but where you and I would say oh those aren't the uh, those aren't where you want to go find disciples. That's not where you want to look for disciples. But Christ himself is down there that day and he is talking to these men and he is ministering to these men and he says, come and follow me. Amen. I need some disciples. I need somebody to carry on this work after I'm gone. I need somebody that will get along with me and let me minister to them. I need somebody to have faith. I need somebody to believe oh, that, that they can perform the exploits and the miracles that I am doing while I'm here. How the whole conversation went, I don't know. I wasn't there. Once again... It allows me to use my imagination. Amen. Dangerous once again. I believe Peter spoke up. The first one had to. Peter was always a little loose-lipped. Amen. He always had something to say. I believe Peter spoke up and said, Hey, you don't want me? Yeah, there's a, let me go talk to them. Let me go minister to them. I got something to say. We're being real here, okay? These weren't these aren't superhuman individuals. These were real humans this day. These were real people. These were rough men. I believe Peter spoke up, Sister Tammy said, Well, <laughs> oh, I got something to say for sure. Put me in that class. I'll straighten them out. Yeah, let me go down there on Wednesday night. I'll fix them. I got something to say. You know, come on, these are real people. I got something to say. Ah, uh, well, Lord, I I, will, I want you to know. I, Peter's saying, I may not be the best candidate. I may not be the best one. I, I may not be the one that, 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 that you want because uh, sometimes I, I get in the flesh a little bit and I, I say some stuff that I, I shouldn't say. I've been known to have a slip of the tongue. I've been known, oh, we don't like to talk about this. We don't like to talk about the disciples in this kind of way, but this is the kind of people they were. Amen. This is the kind of people that they were. Amen. Oh, I, you, you really don't want me? You don't want me? Oh, I know that uh, the, the scribes and the Pharisees, I, I know the leaders of the synagogue aren't down here talking to you gentlemen, uh, but I need some disciples. I need somebody that's willing to work. I need somebody that is willing to follow me. Uh, you might want to go on up there in town and talk to somebody else. Amen. You might want to go and talk to somebody else. Well, uh, we know we talked to Thomas and, and uh, where, where, where the Lord met Thomas. Amen. 
that man wasn't here on the seashore, but where he met Thomas, no doubt, Thomas uh, was full of doubt and unbelief. I can't do that, Lord. There's no way I can do that. I, I don't believe that I am able to. I don't believe that I can, oh, I can be a follower of you. We're talking about men that no doubt felt as though they were uh, lesser than. People that felt as though that I am not worthy uh, to follow him. Oh, but how it all went out, I don't know. But I know that on that seashore that day that Christ is talking to these men, these rough, around the edges individual. Peter, no doubt speaking up and, and giving every reason as to why the Lord doesn't want him. I'm going to embarrass you. I'm going to be one that's going to speak out of turn. I'm going to be one that's going to speak before I think, Lord, you don't want me. And Christ looks at these individuals, oh, that we all can say are unworthy, that we all can say are unqualified, that we all can say would not be good preachers or teachers. And he says, come and follow me and I will do what? I'm going to leave you the same. I, I'm going to let you do whatever you want to do. No, he said, come and follow me and I will make you a fisher of a man. Come and follow me and I will make you into what you need to be. Amen. Hallelujah. The call today is coming to you. The call today is being extended unto you. Oh, I know we feel as though in ourselves I can't be uh, serving the Lord because I have all of this other stuff going on in my life. There is no way I can commit my heart and commit in my life to him because I've got all this preacher. You don't know what all I do behind the scenes. Preacher, you don't know what all I'm involved in behind the scenes. Preacher, you don't know my past. Oh, I may not, but the one that's calling you does. Amen. The one that is calling you today doesn't know where you've been. The one that is calling you today doesn't know the secrets behind closed doors. The one that is calling you today knows the vices that have a hold of you that you cannot break. But what he is saying to you today, he is saying, follow me. Just start following me and I will take care of the rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, oh my, amen. We must understand today that the call of God is coming to humanity. Come and follow me, amen. The call was not, well, boys, when you get home and when you go to school and when you get educated in the synagogue and spend a little bit of time in the temple, then I want you to come and follow me. But no, he said, I want you to drop your nets where they are. Throw the anchor up on the shore so the Oh, don't drift away and start following me right now. And I will, do, oh, hallelujah. Oh, when Peter started following Christ, he was still loose-lipped. When Thomas started following Christ, he was still, I had that doubt and unbelief. Oh, my, when Matthew started following Christ, he was the tax collector that nobody liked. Amen. But they followed anyway, and God took care of the rest. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. When Judas followed Christ, they knew he had a problem with control over the money. But Christ said, follow me, and I will take care of the rest. To you today, I know you feel unworthy. I know you feel lesser than. I know you feel as though there's no way that I could. There's no way that I can. But do you hear the call this morning? Follow me. Hallelujah. Do you hear the call this morning as Sister Tammy comes to the piano today? Follow me. Hallelujah. Do you feel the drawing of your heart? Do you feel the pulling at your soul? Do you feel the Lord calling your name today? Follow me. Hallelujah. Oh, I do. I hear it today. I hear the Lord talking to your heart today. Brother Ryan, I can give you a long list as to why I can't. Oh, you know what? I could probably add some to that list too. 
Amen. I can tell you why I'm not qualified. I can tell you why I shouldn't be here today. Oh, but I let me tell you what God will do to you when you decide to follow him. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what God will do to you when you decide to follow him. When you quit trying to fix the mess. When you quit trying to put the pieces together. When you quit trying to clean yourself up before you come to the altar. Oh, when you make up your mind, Lord, I'm going to follow you. I'm bringing my mess. I'm bringing my turmoil. Stand with me all over the house. I'm bringing my disappointment. I'm bringing my scars and my pain and my addiction. I'm bringing it all to you, Lord. I'll just follow. I may stumble along the way. I may not be running fast, but Lord, I will follow you. Hallelujah. The call is being extended to you today. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Do you hear the call? Hallelujah. Do you hear the call today? Pray saints all over the house. Do you hear the call today, sinner friend? Do you hear the call today to the one that is not following? Do you hear the call today? Follow me. Follow me. Come on, come on, come on. Lay down your nets and I'll make you fishers of men. Hallelujah. Follow me. Hallelujah. And I'll fix all of that stuff. Follow me and I'll put all that back together. Hallelujah. Just follow me. Hallelujah. The Lord needs some disciples. The Lord needs somebody who's going to follow him. The Lord needs somebody who's going to walk in his footsteps and perform his exploits. And you today, ma'am, you today, sir, are a prime candidate to be a follower of Christ. You today are one that he's calling today he's big beckoning your heart he is pulling at your heart saying follow me today hallelujah hallelujah these altars are open this morning amen to current followers of Christ or those that want to follow now Lord hallelujah let's gather in for a moment hallelujah Lord I will continue to follow Lord I will continue to follow or today I take up my cross and I will follow you. Today, I'll take up my cross and I'll follow you with my whole heart. Hallelujah. Come on, ma'am. Come on, sir. Hallelujah. Be a follower today. Be a follower. Oh, no. I'm not saying you got to be a saint. I'm not saying you're teaching Sunday school next Sunday. Hallelujah. But become a follower of Christ and he'll take care of the rest. Follow him and he'll take care of it all. Hallelujah. And there's nothing you got to do. And there's nothing you've got to clean up. Let the Lord do it all. Just start following him and let him lead you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. He's leading me. Amen. And I know he knows where we're going. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, remember tonight, 6 o'clock, we'll be right back in the house of the Lord. Amen. If you're not going to be here tonight, remember next Sunday morning, revival. Amen. Be here. Amen. But let's be back tonight. Don't stay home. Be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And let's see what God will do in his house. Amen. Tonight. Stand with us all over the house, if you will. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Bruce, would you mind dismissing us in prayer? When he's done, find somebody. Shake their hand, hug their neck, tell him it was good to see him in the house of the Lord.